Hi there, so are you someone looking to get into CNC machining? I've created a set of videos here for hobbyists who are buying their first machine or thinking about buying their first machine and it's going to enable you to have all the information you need from start to finish to make a part. In this first video we're going to be looking at, it's just going to be a general overview of everything you're going to need and we're going to download the software and it's going to be something that you can start today. You can start right now, it's not going to cost you a penny and you're going to be on your first steps to learning how to use a CNC. Okay, so you can see over in the background back there, you can see my CNC machine. We're going to look at that closer in a future video. Where in fact, I have actually already done a video, which I will link up here, I think, somewhere along the top here. And that just goes over the machine quickly. I'll go into, like I say, I'll go into it in further detail in a future video. The aim of this video is going to be to get you up and running with the software. Now, the software that we're going to be using is called Fusion 360, and it has a couple of processes that you're going to need to do. You're going to, first of all, need to actually make your design, which is going to be, you're going to start off with a sketch, and you're going to, from that sketch, you're going to create a 3D object, and from that 3D object, you're going to create what's called G-code. Now, the machine reads the G-code and actually moves the machine to where it needs to be. So from now on, most of this video is going to be on the computer. So we're going to switch over to there and get straight into it. Okay, so the core of the machine is not actually the machine itself, in my opinion. It is the software. The software that you use can make or break a machine. And I use the software called Fusion 360 uh, from Autodesk. Now this piece of software is actually free for hobbyists and makers. So if you are, like I say, this video is aimed at hobbyists and makers. So this is a free way for you to get the software. All you do is go to this website up here, which I will link in the description and click get started now. It will scroll you down and you've just got to follow these three steps. Check if you qualify. And like I say here, it's free for startups generating less than 100,000 a year or non-commercial or hobbyist users. And if you qualify in the first step, you can move on to the step, second step, which is to create an account. And then it will, there will be a link somewhere to download and install Fusion 360. Now, this is a great website just to go through uh, and look at some of the features and whatnot it has. You, there's, a, there's a help center here, support, and uh, a whole learning center as well that you can use in here. There's lots of valuable information on this website. Right at the bottom of the page, for example, there is just here tutorial videos which you can go and check out there's lots of valuable information there okay so once you've downloaded fusion 360 you'll, you'll be presented with this screen here which is where you can put in your login details you're obviously going to have to make an account and fusion 360 works on a cloud based system so you're going to need the internet to use the software which did put me off it at the beginning but you get used to it it does have its advantages as well meaning that any time that you need to get access to your files, you can do that on any computer that's got Fusion 360. You do not need your computer. Your files are then saved on their cloud and they're accessible from anywhere in the world. But once you've logged in, you'll be presented with this screen here. And this is basically the, the, the front screen of Fusion 360. On the side here, you have your projects. Obviously, I've got a load of projects in here which I've been working on in the past, but you'll probably only have a couple of folders in here. And this is just like a explorer window so you can click new project and it will create a folder and in that folder you can create files and if your when you when your fusion opens up if it isn't if it looks like this and it isn't there it's these data panel dots up here click that and that will make it appear so up here you have file and you can create a new design new drawing and whatnot save forwards and backwards so undo certain actions and then you've got this tab here is the different working environments you've got. So you've got model, patch, which is like for, for curved surfaces, sheet metal, rendering to make, a, to make an image of something if you want to. You can do animations. You can do simulations like stress testing, manufacturing, and then there's obviously a drawing. The tabs that I'll probably be showing you in these uh, videos will be the model tab, the manufacturer tab, and I might look quickly at the drawing tab drawing is not really not really used unless you're wanting to show other people your work so up here you have your toolbar where you can create your sketches and whatnot and your different uh, extrude uh, commands up in this top right corner here you have the 3d viewer where you can select which angle you want to look at your part from um, you have your status here and where, when you need updates and whatnot it will show up on this corner here down at the bottom here, this is called the timeline, and this is a feature that I really like. Um, let me open a project. 
Okay, so this is a box that I've been working on recently, and I already posted the video on this. It was for my nephew's christening. I'll post the link up the top here. But I just wanted to open this to show you better some of the features in here. So up here, we've got the orbit uh, commands here. So you can select which view you want to look at the part from, and you can just move around the part as you wish and as you need to. Down here at the bottom is the timeline. So this is, if you drag this right to the beginning, there is nothing there, as you can see and this is like a timeline so you can really go through how you made the part and you can show someone how your thought process was behind building it and you can also use this to go back and change something that you did right at the beginning so like if I wanted to make this taller instead of actually having to change the whole design now I can take this timeline back to when I did that whenever it was over here somewhere make it taller and then just scroll the timeline back and it would modify the timeline as it goes. It's something that's uh, unique to Fusion and I, I've used it a few times, it's, it's helpful in quite a lot of ways. But for this video I want to start making a drawing on a part that we're going to cut in this little mini video series. So let's get a new file going here. I'm going to go new design and I can close the old one there and what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a sketch so you click up here the create sketch button and I'm going to create it on this surface here it asks you first of all where do you want to create the sketch on which surface so I want to create it there it'll automatically move the viewer to to that position there and I've got a lovely piece of wood here that we're going to be working on it's a pear it's from a pear tree so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a box the size of the piece of wood so the piece of wood is 77 millimeters deep and if you press the tab button on your keyboard it, it goes to the second command up here at the top there and you can type in the other dimension which is 195 and do that and now all I'm going to do is create a stop sketch so that's just all we've done there is create a really simple rectangle you'll see as well when I create when I click stop sketch it moved back to the previous position we were at the viewing position now I'm going to extrude that with this command up here which is going to create it into a solid this is very much like uh, Google SketchUp so how far do you want it to go up my piece of wood is six, 26 millimeters thick so I'm just going to click 26 press enter and that now is the block of wood that I'm working with. Okay, and what my what my plan is for this is to maybe create a some sort of a shape on that surface there, where I can add some text, maybe the Wood Basher logo, just as a simple thing here. Maybe like a curved surface up here with some mounting holes and a curved section there. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create from this block here that we've got here the outside profile of what I want to to create here so I'm going to create another sketch I'm going to click create sketch and I'm going to select that surface if I move it across here like that I'm going to create I'm going to select the top surface of that uh, block of wood that we've just created there and now we're drawing on that surface there and what I can do is I can create up here I've got the line tool so I can create a line and it will automatically snap to the center of them things there. You see that triangle? That means it's in the dead center. So you can click there and go down to the other one. Click there and go down to the other one. And press escape and that will bring you back. That will take you out of that command. And then what I like to do is click the line and press X on your keyboard. And that turns them into construction lines, meaning that it's not breaking the surface up anymore it's just using them lines now as references for other things so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create part of the profile that I want to create in this small corner here and then I'm going to mirror it into all the other ones again using the line command I'm just going to go across and I'm going to go up 25 millimeters press escape and you see that lines blue and then I'm going to go down into the sketch tab here and you see I've got a load more different commands that I can use and one of the ones I want to use here is arc so I want to use a three point arc I'm going to select the first point just there and I'm going to select the second point just there and then I'm going to create it just like that 
and now we've got a line and a nice arc here. Another thing I can do if I zoom in here is there is a fillet command in here, fillet. So I can create a fillet between this line and this line. And then you can just move it to however you want it to be and press enter. Okay, and now I've got that one corner how I want it. I can use this command up here, which is mirror, and it brings up this little box here. I'll move it over, and it says you've got two options. You've got the objects, and you've got the mirror line. So first we click object, and we're going to select the lines that we want to mirror. We've obviously got this little corner here as well. And we've got three objects that we want to mirror up. The mirror line is going to be this one here and you can see it automatically gives you sort of a preview of what it's going to look like. Click OK and that brings that box over to the other side and now you can do the mirror command again and you can select now you've got six objects obviously because you're doing the other side as well and your mirror line is going to be that one there. Click OK and that now brings you to here where you've now got a solid you can see the blue part there is now a solid there and the outside section is also its own solid so what we can do get rid of that there I'm gonna click stop sketch again oh no what we'll do before we do that is we'll create some some mounting holes so I'm going to go sketch and I'm gonna go circle and I'm going to go diameter so we're going to be up here and we're going to select I'm just going to click roughly where I think it needs to go and I'm going to say we want a, a 5 mil. do we want a 5 mil hole? yeah we're going to go 5 mil hole go OK and then I'm going to because it, it's obviously not in the position where I want it there I can just click the center here and move it to where I think it needs to be and I think that's probably a good position there by the time it's got a counter sunk on it and whatnot it'll be about right there so I'm going to go mirror again and I'm going to cancel that because it's already selected something. I'm going to select my circle, select the line and it will bring it up over there. Click OK. Do the same thing for the bottom two circles. Click OK and now we've got all them circles. Now I'm going to stop the sketch and I'm going to remove parts of the material that we don't want to have. So we don't want that and we don't want these centers of the circles here and if you just move the object around if you hold shift and the center button on your mouse you can move an object around so now you can either bring that up and extrude it up or if you go down into the object it cuts it away and that's the different op options here but it will automatically select cut if you go through an object so I'm going to go OK there and now you can see we've got the shape that we want to create. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some different commands here to to modify this part here other than creating a sketch. So what you've got up here is you've got modify and you can create a fillet on a 3D object using modify here. So I'm going to go fillet and I'm going to select the outside profiles here and move it around and you'll find that little arrow there and if you zoom in you can create a little mini fillet going all the way around the edge. I'm going to go OK, and that creates a nice little, a nice little edge all the way around there. What we can do as well on these holes here is we can create a countersink. So I'm going to go into the modify tab, and there's more options here, and one of them is chamfer. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to click on this part of the hole here. But I'm just going to move around. I'm going to click all of them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag the arrow down to where I think it needs to be. And that looks about right to me. Click OK. And now we've got some nice countersunk holes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the Woodbusher text to the top here. I'm going to use a different font because our, our different fonts are a bit tricky to use on here. That's something we'll touch on in the future, but I'm going to use a font that I know works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Create Sketch, and I'm going to click on the top there, the surface that we want to create it to, and I'm going to go 
drop it down there and I'm going to click on the text. And I just want to touch on something here quickly. If you click these three dots here, you get an option here, pin to toolbar, pin to short shortcuts, or you can go change keyboard shortcut if you want to. I'm just going to pin it to the toolbar, and what that will do is that will bring it up there, which makes it a lot easier to get to in the future. So now I can just click that and wherever I want it, and then I'm going to type in my logo, and then I'm going to type in the name of the channel, which I want to type onto here, like that. And what we can do now is I can use this dot here, because you can see it's upside down. I can use this dot to just spin it round to the top there. And now it's the right way up. So I'm going to select the font that I want to use. And like I say, fonts are a bit tricky, so you're going to have to find one that works for you. But I've got one here, which I quite like. And I'm just going to select that. And I'm going to change the size, I think, to maybe 23. That should be OK. I'm just going to click OK and then we will move it across a little bit and try and center it up. And I think I can go a little bit bigger than that because I want to get it right up to the edge there. So what I'm going to do is double click it and it will bring back up this box here. And I'm going to go 24. See what that does. That looks a bit big. So let's just go 23.5. And that's just made it slightly bigger. Go OK and then just center it back up to where I want it. And it looks a bit high. Again, like I said before, we made these lines here, these constructions lines. And you can just see them because they're on the other sketch. But you can use them to sort of line up whatever you're doing onto your project. And that's it. I'm just going to click stop sketch there. And it will bring us back to where we were before. But now we've got the sketch on the top. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extrude that down into the wood. So I'm just going to click extrude and then click the text. And I'm just going to say minus, let's say, 3 millimeters. Let's go down 3. Now let's go down 2. That's a bit deep. And then I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice that it's gone red around there. That's because we're going into another solid. If we was to do a positive value, it would be coming out. So it will automatically change the operation here. We want it to cut. We want to cut away that part of that that first material that we made. If you was to do join or add, it would uh, join or intersect. It would do different things there. You can create a new body, new component. But we, in this case, we want to use cut. So I'm going to go OK. And you can see it's done its thing, and we've now got a little groove with the Woodbasher sort of logo there. Now, let's just say we need to figure out now what kind of cutter we're going to use for the next operation. I'm just going to show you that quickly and touch on that. So let's go up to an area like this here, where we've got a point there and a point there, which is actually, let's go to the top. That's actually not a good area to do that. This is a good area to measure just across there like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom into that area there. And up here we have the measure tool. So I'm going to click measure. And I'm going to click that first dot there. And then there's another one there. So I'll click that. And if I move this across, you can see that's 1.712 millimeters. So it's just over one and a half millimeters. Again, we are measuring a slight diagonal there. And you can see it gets slightly thinner up here. There's a thinner section down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably end up cutting that with maybe like a one millimeter end mill, which is very small, I know, but it should be fine. We should be able to do that. Uh, we'll touch on that in the next video. So one thing I want to show you before I sign off here is what uh, a few more little features that you can do. Another thing you can do is you can make this part look more realistic so you can make it look more like what you're actually going to be making and depending on what computer you have um, it might actually slow down the program so quite often I will leave my projects like this here because this is the this is its basic form and this is what's going to enable you to use the software as quickly as possible but what you can do is if you right click you have the appearance tab and you can um, in here there's all different things you can make it look like wood for example let's just say we want to make this out of cherry I know we're not but 
we can select up here we want to create the whole body we want to make the whole body look like cherry so we're going to grab the cherry and drag it across and it will make the whole piece look like a piece of cherry wood I know it's the, 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 the grain is maybe wrong and whatnot, but you can do it with mahogany, drag it across, make it look like mahogany, oak, do whatever you want. Walnut. And it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. Let's just say, for example, as well, we want to change the bottom of these letters into a black colour. So we can go paint, and you can. there's all different colours in here, as you can see but we're going to use black, but we're going to just do one face. We're going to do, do one surface. We don't want to create the whole body black. We want to do just that face. So we're going to select up their faces, and then we're going to drag the paint over to that face, and that will make the bottom of the A black. So what I'll do is I'll just do that quickly to all of the letters, just to make them all the same. And there we have it. But like I say, this is going to slow down your machine based on whatever, whatever profiles you use and what machine you have. So I would, in, in my case, most of the, my projects I leave as they are in that grey form as we saw before. Another thing that I didn't talk about before is just moving around on the machine basically. So using your mouse, if you press the centre button, uh, you can move apart like that, you sort of pan it around. And if you hold in the shift key and do the same thing, you rotate the part so you can move it in that sort of area like that. And you can use the same command up here, the orbit commands, to, to move around the part as you wish. Obviously down the bottom here we have the timeline, as I showed you before, on that keepsake box but you can drag and move around and see what uh, what's what over there. So if I just turn on everything here, I'll just look at that quickly. So if we go back to the beginning of where we did it, you can see, if I move like that, you can see we created a sketch, the block of wood. We actually created the block of wood, we extruded it, then we created a sketch on the top, which is there. And that is uh, with the profile that we want to cut. We extruded that profile, chamfered the edges, chamfered the edges of the holes, created the text, and then we extruded the text. And you end up with that. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be moving over to the manufacturing tab here. I'll show you it quickly, but you can see all the toolbar changes up here straight away, and you've got your different setups. And this is where you've got all your different commands for your machine. And what we'll do is we'll touch on that in the next video. I don't want to go into detail on it now because it will create the video, it make the video too long. But that's what we're going to be looking at in the next video. But yeah, my advice now for you is if you are looking to buy a CNC or you're looking to in the future get a CNC or you've not got one or you've got one, my advice would be to download this piece of software and start to experiment with it because you can do so much with this one piece of software. It's free to use as long as you're a hobbyist and it's got loads of great features. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you uh, got some valuable information out of that. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Like I say, this is going to be a mini series of videos. There's probably going to be like five or six videos. And we're going to go into real detail on some of the parts as a hobbyist. So be sure to check back in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.